Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my brothers my sisters Ramadan is going well on one hand and on the other hand there are brothers and sisters of ours struggling across the globe for different reasons take a look at Palestine and what's happening there right now totally unacceptable absurd it bleeds it causes the bleeding of the heart and you know what it hurts our souls we want to see goodness and justice we want to see a stop to the oppression and aggression we would like to see protection of masjid al aqsa etc etc my brothers my sisters that is the duty not just of the muslims but of every human being to want peace goodness justice stability a stop to aggression oppression and protection of the holy lands may allah almighty grant that to us my brothers my sisters usually in ramadan i travel to a different part of the world or different parts of the world tarawih salat tarawih we participate in and a lot of lectures we do this time it was a little bit different where i decided you know what after many many years i need to in ramadan visit the holy lands perhaps to help ourselves enrich uh, get closer to allah spiritual enrichment and become uh, better people and concentrate on personal ibadah and acts of worship but it, in the same in, in the same breath i thought to myself wherever we get an opportunity of dawa we will seize it and so subhanallah uh, i was invited to dubai and i started off ramadan in medina i dashed over to makkah made umrah came back and then i went to dubai for 3 days the first day we had a massive event at the al manar islamic center it was a beautiful event attended by thousands of people we had a shahada Uh, and we have regular shahadas through this month of ramadan i don't even know how many shahadas we've had alhamdulillah be they online or offline or in public or in private but my brothers and sisters the next day we had another program also in dubai which was absolutely amazing at the sheikh hamdan bin rashid masjid and it was beautiful thousands of you attended and the talks are posted online mashallah tabarakallah the following day also we had the third event public event it was amazing in the same masjid masjid al-sheikh hamdan bin rashid and this event was also beamed i had recorded it on my phone you know whenever you see these videos on my youtube channel a lot of them are recorded just with my own phone right now i'm speaking from the same phone subhanallah so my brothers and sisters something happened that was very different from how it was portrayed later on and i want to talk about this a little bit because i know from amongst you there are people who are genuine that's the majority and then there are mischief makers trying to push agendas we need to be careful of them then there are journalists each one of them has a different level of fear of allah if they're muslim and each one of them could be belonging to a little group or to a little, or sometimes heavily politicized to a certain country or to a certain cause and so they look at everyone else as enemies they seize the opportunity of something to just say uh, a word that would do put down everyone who doesn't support their own cause so let me explain to you what happened the third day just as and and, and I left later on after the the event on that day uh, and the masjid event I left and I I actually uh, left the UAE because I had to continue in my journeys right now if you want to know where I am I'm speaking to you I am in Doha in the capital of Qatar and this evening we have a massive event in Qatar the amphitheater and inshallah I pray it will be a huge success by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak all about Ramadan literally that's the topic I was given all about Ramadan and inshallah we want to showcase it to the people and talk about it and what we're going to benefit from it and so on and so forth and what it does to us inshallah but that the, the evening before i left dubai i was invited by the hosts the islamic affairs to say uh, today we'll be having iftar inshallah i was i had iftar anyway to the, the the previous few days uh and that particular day we had iftar at a certain place where they had invited people from all walks of life most of them were muslim probably a thousand plus people uh, from my from what my eyes saw and thereafter I met a lot of Muslims, a lot of Christians, a lot of Hindus, a lot of Sikhs, uh, and many others. And we sat for iftar. I had my iftar. I made, meaning I broke my fast. I made my salatul maghrib, uh, greeted a few people, and went away. Those who know me know I don't like to sit for too long somewhere. I like to just, you know, sit, uh, do whatever I have to, and, and leave. Because we were there for an iftar, I had that iftar just before iftar. 
a, a Jewish man walked, sat next to me. I, I asked him who he was and uh, w you know where he was from. He was from New York, lived in Dubai for quite a few years. He said about eight years, I think. And mashallah, there was you know a very light discussion. The I had no presentation there. I had no no major participation there. I was just a guest who uh, who came in and had iftar, made salat al maghrib, and went. That the idea of that iftar was in order to showcase the Ramadan to the non-Muslims who are resident of the UAE. That's not a bad idea. And it happens in London, it happens in Canada, it happens in US, it happens in Muslim countries, it happens in so many communities, it happens uh, so much across the globe where, uh, you know, the iftar and the Ramadan and Islam and so on and the teachings and the, the, the way it happens and what it's supposed to do for us and the ambience of it is all showcased to people who don't know much about Islam. So. Uh, later on, when I left, I saw a few news articles that were quite accurate initially. Uh, that, you know, there was this iftar arranged by uh, so-and-so for people of all faiths to get together who are living in the UAE. And the idea is the harmony and the understanding and so on and so forth, which is true. Later on, I noticed, and I'm going to say a name, I'm, I'm in Doha right now, and I'm in Qatar. And imagine that would prove to you that I, I've got nothing to do with the politics of everything. We're, we're above it, subhanAllah. But... Truth be said, Al Jazeera Arabic wrote a very mischievous title. They gave it a very deceiving uh, title that was serving an agenda of hate, nothing else. And when I saw it, I said, this is a lie. They had a picture, the picture they chose. And I don't even know if they were talking about that particular event because there may have been other events elsewhere, I don't know, but most probably. The picture they chose was one where I was seated with a Jewish man on this side and uh, one of the organizers on the other and so on. And you know what? There were people of other faiths on the, on, on the same table. And what had happened? So they wrote, oh, this was an iftar celebrating normalization of whatever, whatever. And they wrote whatever served their agenda, which I felt was very, very wrong. You know, I thought I didn't think so badly of Al Jazeera or others until I saw this article and I said to myself, the person here doesn't know the damage that they're doing. Intentionally, they have misconstrued, misinterpreted, written a headline that's going to get across the globe that is so false. It is absolute rubbish. That's what they wrote, total nonsense. And they added in the article things of whatever politics might have happened in the past or is happening, which had nothing to do with the particular event. Absolutely nothing. So, you know, what do you do now? I guess it happens to people, to politicians, to religious people who are popular, to people who are uh, known across the globe and so on. They seize this opportunity to say things. My name wasn't written at all because they didn't. I was not one of the organizers. I didn't know anything. There was no, my name wasn't written at all in that article. But obviously people would recognize me because I'm a known person. Later on, our Muslim brothers from from Islamic, uh, uh, you know, uh, journalistic channels that document whatever, or they, they, they speak about the pillars of Islam, or they, uh, they, they speak about uh, what's going on in the Muslim Ummah, which is, which is a good thing in, 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 in essence, but they decided to carry the false tale, and they decided to uh, portray it as though Mufti Menk is, you know, uh, compromising his faith, and this, wallahi, that didn't happen. I just want to clarify we stand with our brothers and sisters in Palestine and with Masjid Al-Aqsa forever, forever. We stand with them. We believe in the cause and we believe in it forever. Subhanallah. And for your information, the last time I tried to go there, they denied me entry. They actually told me, sorry, you can't come. And there, there we go. So Subhanallah, we still stand for the cause. And here are people saying, oh, we did this and we did that. And subhanAllah, no, no, no. For me, it was a simple iftar. We went in, I met a lot of people. Later on that night, we even had a shahada. And subhanAllah, I'm, we're busy thinking any shahada you can get is a gain. SubhanAllah. Here we are showcasing the deen. You know, the people of other faiths are not your enemies. 
I, they are the ones through whom you will get the shahadas. They are the ones through whom you will get Jannah if you happen to work or you happen to showcase them the deen and understand. Another thing is when you have an enemy who is no longer an enemy, for example, because of, you know, someone who hated Islam. I remember there was an old lady who said, I hated Islam, but because of the good teachings that I, I've now seen come from yourselves as Muslims, I no longer hate it, but I'm still not a Muslim. Well, that's a gain, isn't it? So subhanAllah, you need to understand this. My brothers, my sisters, the field of dawah is vast. I would never have spoken about this, but I believe there are genuine people out there who will understand what we've said. So my brothers and sisters, uh, you know something? If we have had a, an opportunity to showcase Islam and the iftar to a group of non-Muslims, alhamdulillah, it's not bad. For as long as you didn't compromise your Salatul Maghrib, you didn't compromise your you know, your faith and so on, alhamdulillah. And mashallah, you know, we, according to me, I had that opportunity. And like I said, there was even a shahada later on. But some days later, I saw these terrible articles, absolute rubbish. If you ask me, I don't even like to use that word, but it was totally unacceptable. Uh, totally taken out of context. They just got a picture of the moment when, uh, when I was there, and subhanAllah, they just gave it a story that didn't even fit what happened on the ground. I hope that this clarification or this sort of, uh, you know, uh, na na narration of what actually happened is understood by the people who fear God Almighty. As for the journalists, I've given up a long time ago on most of them because even the last time we had Muslims, people I know, who looked for the worst possible thing to say about a photograph. And they said it in order to gain popularity, in order to serve their cause, in order to bash a popular person, in order to find fault in what someone else is doing. That's all. When you see a photo and you think the worst as a journalist, I can name some of these guys. They know who they are actually. Dirty, dirty minds, dirty hearts and souls. Why? Come on, clean it. Clean it, please. You have an Allah. You have not an Allah, you have Allah to go back to, subhanAllah. You have a, a Lord, that's what I mean. You have a Lord to go back to, to answer. Don't you fear the day you're going to die going to your grave? SubhanAllah. If what's happening politically is happening politically, it's got nothing to do with me, SubhanAllah. It can keep on happening, whatever it is. We are, we are totally separated from that. We are you know, people who promote the deen, any opportunity of da'wah, we are there, SubhanAllah. So may Allah Almighty grant us goodness and protect us in every single way. And may Allah Almighty uh, grant us the harmony, the peace, the stability we need in our own minds and in our souls to begin with. But please fear Allah regarding what you say. If you see an, a photograph and think of the worst possible thing, you need help. You need help. And if you've written it and spread it, you've actually created a bigger problem in the ummah than what exists right now. So if we have a big disaster in a few places in the, in the world, and we do, by you creating this type of hate, you're creating hate in the Muslim ummah, so much hate in the hearts for one another, and you were the one who caused it. May Allah forgive you guys, honestly. And may Allah forgive all of us. May Allah make, forgive me as well for any of my shortcomings, knowingly or unknowingly. And may Allah grant us true love as an ummah. May Allah help us to stand up for the good causes, the causes of justice and goodness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate the status of all of us. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.